How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 13, and we've got a battle against our neighbors to the north today in North Carolina. The Tar Heels are 6-4. and four. Uh, Wait, they have, they have 17 prospects visiting for this game. That's insane. 17 players. This is a, a make-or-break game, potentially, for their recruiting. Uh, and we're going to come out and do whatever we can to stop them. We are... The better overall team, statistically, they're having a, a better time on offense, although not by much. And defensively, we look uh, much, much better than them. Uh, I don't think they had oh, a great season. Let's see. They did beat Ohio State, but unfortunately for them, the Buckeyes are 3-7. and seven. They lost to Florida State, uh, lost to a ranked Miami, lost to Georgia Tech, and lost to Virginia. What's their best win? NC State, maybe, at 7-4? and four? Uh, yeah, that looks like it. So 10 and one for us. We're looking to go 11 and one and really secure our spot in the conference championship. Uh, which speaking of, let's take a look at some conference standings this week. Curious to see where we're sitting. We have, uh, well, we, did we beat Miami? Did we play Miami? I think we beat Miami pretty early on, right? Yeah, it was only a couple weeks ago. Uh, we crushed them, so even if we lose this game and Miami wins out, we're making it into the conference championship because we have the tiebreaker over them, but we want to go 9-0 uh, in conference play if we can. In the uh, Atlantic division, it looks like, gosh dang it, like we're going to play Notre Dame again. Starting and ending our season, it feels like all the time uh, against the Fighting Irish. Um, I would rather play Clemson. They're only 95 overall, or even better would be NC State. But Notre Dame has just a game against Miami left. So we are actually rooting for the Hurricanes to win. It would put it so that we could play Clemson or potentially NC State. Um, who won between those two? Clemson did win, so we would probably play the Tigers. Uh, what about the rest of the races? In the Big 12, it looks like it's Texas. Do they play? Let's see. They played three more conference games. So definitely that one's still on the table. The Big 10 East, it looks like it's going to be Michigan, potentially Penn State, depending on how things go. And in the Big 10 West, it's, a, again, a pretty close race. But Iowa is leading the way there. I'm just going to look at Power 5 right now. In the Pac-12 North, it's Cal up over Oregon. The Ducks have been all over the place this season. Six and four with some interesting losses. Cal Golden Bears are up to number eight in the country at nine and two. Only one loss in conference. And it's UCLA right now that would be representing the South. A close one. Surprised that they are up above. They must have the tiebreaker with the win over USC. No, they haven't played each other. So uh, at this point, I would kind of expect it to be... USC going forward their tidely conference record but they have the better division record so uh, I mean it, it just comes down to the game that they play against each other USC has to play Western Kentucky so a little tune-up game there how about our SEC in the SEC East it's Georgia with the lead followed pretty closely by Florida uh wow literally one ranked team in the East and it's Georgia at number seven in the West it's LSU leading the way um, and there's only three ranked teams in the West. So the SEC having a bit of a down year at the moment. Uh, close battle there between both of the Tiger teams for that one. So a very interesting look with a few weeks to go left in the season. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see how that one ends up. Let's take a look at our top 25, see if we have any games. I think it was just like two. We have Notre Dame and Miami playing and LSU and Auburn. I think that was it. So not a whole lot of ranked matchups. This is our final regular season game against UNC as I don't think we uh, have a whole lot to worry about, hopefully. How about with the recruiting? We are in a really, really good spot at this point. If we're looking at committed players, I mean 81 overall, 81 overall, 80, 79, 78, 78, 77, 76. Like that's pretty crazy. A 71 to 70. 70 overall being our lowest committed player is insane to me. And then looking at the top schools, we are about to uh, commit JJ Tyson. He's 96% locked. We're actually going to take his points away this week. Uh, and we should get potentially an 82 overall strong safety which is super high overall is he the number one in this class he's the number one strong safety and a five star which would be 
Nice there. Spencer Stanley still in a battle with Georgia. We'll be in that for a while. We just had our visit, so we have a big lead. Um, but their visit comes this week, so we just want them to have a worse visit than us. Regardless, I don't think that they're going to make up 1,100 points necessarily. So I think that we just have the lead there now. And we'll take that into the offseason. Definitely want to give Spencer Stanley a lot of points and make sure that we get him. Jeremy Harrison, similar situation. We just finally had our visit and now we gain the lead over Purdue. But we're going to keep fighting for him. Mike Fontaine, we might start giving a ton of points to. Same with Billy White. We are in the lead, but they're not very locked down. Elvis Payne, we're going to take points away from because, again, he's 94% locked. Not in a battle with anybody else. So I think he commits this week or the next um, is it the same with Antoine Pope? No, Antoine Pope, we just need to give points to. So, yeah, let's give points to Mike Fontaine and Billy White. And we still have quite a few to work with. So, Freddie Harper, we're down quite a bit, but Washington hasn't given him stuff. But, I don't know, 3,000 and they have the visit. It's not worth it. Michael Davis is going to be worth it. We're the only team to offer him a scholarship. Maybe we can get him to commit. So, honestly, our recruiting is just far and away incredible uh i think let's see we want to give the rest of the points that we can to george fitzpatrick to maybe get a tight end this season uh it won't be great if we don't pick him up but it also won't be the end of the world and we still have so many points to give out so let's give some to lonnie bryant see if maybe we can do something with the 74 overall defensive tackle um Nobody needs scholarship offers. We still have a visit that we can schedule, and that's for Lonnie Bryant, which is great news. So we can send him, uh, we'll send him in, I guess, just the week 14 by Vanderbilt has their visit this week. So, so long as we don't get locked out there, we'll be just fine. And then I think we're going to give the points to either Jeremy Walters or Jason Rollins, both of them, a 72 overall defensive players. Um, how's the coverage? 86-79, relatively quick. 77-93, that's good acceleration for a linebacker. Relatively strong, decent coverage. Yeah, we'll give it to Jason Rollins. Give him the remaining 450. He's not super locked down uh, at 49, but the higher we get him here in the regular season, the easier it'll be in the off season, especially if we're the only team to offer him a scholarship. But that's our point. So glad that we had a ton to work with, and... I do want to point out one thing. Top class-wise, last year at this point, we were dead last. I don't even think we had a single commit. This year, we're sitting at number five. Ten commits, a five-star, eight four-stars, and a three-star. And we're about to pick up a whole lot more as these weeks uh, progress. But let's go ahead and get into this game against the Tar Heels. Um, we are on the road. And again, we have not lost, I don't think. No, we did lose on the road against Penn State wearing the all-whites. So now we aren't allowed to wear them. We'll just wear the standard away uniforms, I guess. <laughs> North Carolina, we could give them the throwback. I think we might give them the throwback. The throwback's cool. We could go with the, the Tar Heel helmets and the navy blue. We could go all Carolina blue. Uh, but I don't think that we've used these throwbacks with them before. And I like it quite a bit. The drop shadow on the numbers is nice. 91 overall for them. 95 offense and a 90 defense. So we have the leg up in every single one of those categories and we're just going to look to come out and slaughter these guys let's make it an easy win and let's just give ourselves those two bye weeks to cruise in and be nice and well rested for the conference championship game so again a pretty solid offense for north carolina even though they're sitting at six and four um 20th in points 31st in yards they do a good job running the ball defensively they're not the best uh, they're not terrible either, but our defense looks much, much better than them. They have, again, what was it, 17 guys visiting, including a couple of five stars and a five-star tight end. It's a shame we couldn't just throw him on the board and count this as a visit for ourselves. Uh, left end, wide receiver, running back are their top three players, mid to low 90s. So we have a little bit of an edge there as they've got two guys injured we are injury free now a right guard and a right end for the Tar Heels um one of them probable I don't think it's gonna matter I think that we just come out here and execute and we should be able to get this win no problem so here in North Carolina the Keenan Memorial Stadium nice day here maybe a little bit chilly in the fall but uh, nice and clear, sunny afternoon. We lose the toss, so we're going to start with the football. And it's windy. 14 miles an hour today. Uh, we'll try to get this so that we kick into the wind in the second and fourth quarters. 
Don't expect to get a return out of this one as they should have the wind at their back. And yeah, this one's booted all the way to the back of the end zone. We're going to field it, but we're just going to take a knee and we'll start at the 25-yard line. See what this offense has for us today. As we're nearing the end of the season, I'll give you guys a little bit of a reminder that if you would like to rename uh, one of our recruits, either after yourself or uh, something weird, you know, nothing too meme -y, uh, feel free to become a Tier 2 or Up channel member. And, uh, you know, by doing that, you'll eventually see a community post, maybe something on the Discord, and you can pick one of our incredible recruits to name after yourself. Second and 13 after the good run on first down. We'll step back to pass. Let's just go with the easy throw to Chad Prachon. He's going to drop it. It wasn't a good pass because I was accidentally throwing on the run. But the fact that he's just not going to hold on to it is pretty absurd. Third and three. This is four down territory for us right now. I'm scoring no matter what on this drive. So we'll hand it off to Braden Bennett up the middle. The blocking's good. And Braden has us the first down. And we'll just keep chugging on down the field. Man, they always do this. They do have a deep safety, but look at how much pressure they're showing on Marquise. I'm going to put him on the fade. And, okay, the safety is going to have to go back with him. This is a risky throw. This is a terribly risky throw, but Malcolm Williams comes down with it. 32 yards downfield. Uh, Radon able to throw it, and uh, Malcolm's just able to get to the spot in time and hold on through the contact. Slightly slower start to the drive than we wanted, but definitely picked up on that one as we'll go read option. And Radon just needs to pick up a block. Maybe. Could have been gone. Well, that was a little bit awkward. 22 yards downfield gives us a first and goal to work with. I think what I want to do is just throw the football. Hopefully to Braden Bennett. Stepping back to pass. And no, we'll give it to Chad Bradshaw. He can hold on to that one. And it was only worth a yard. Kind of was hoping he could break that tackle or get upfield a little bit sooner. But hopefully that play doesn't come back to haunt us. Gained a yard on it. Second and goal now as CJ Beasley comes in for the halfback dive. And up the middle, CJ bowls over a man. Fights through a little bit more contact. Keeps the legs moving. And gets himself into the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. And, uh, well, that wasn't a super long drive. Less than two minutes as we kick this one again into the 14-mile-an-hour wind, which is going to give them a great chance to return the ball. And, yeah, they got uh, they got great field position there. Our defense has been kind of hit or miss the past couple of games, so we're going to hope for the best on this one as they step back to pass. The quarterback, Ryan Johnson, just has to throw that one away. Felt the pressure on first down. Might be switching between uh, a zone and some man coverage pretty frequently in this one. This is an option out towards the edge. The pitch gets away. The blocking is great. The tackle is broken. And my goodness, Elijah Green doing everything to get that 13 yards. We know this team does a decent job running the football. Wasn't expecting quite as much there as they ended up getting. On this first down, that's going to be another handoff. And that's Emmanuel Bush immediately in the backfield to get the tackle for loss. That gives us a fantastic chance now here to potentially pick something up. That's going to be another run. Getting some stiff arm cheese. Will Phillips will eventually pull him down, but he got eight yards. North Carolina running in a pretty strong hurry up here. Has a third and five to contend with. That's going to be a slip screen. And, well, we were there with Kale Mackey if they got the throw off, but Ryan Johnson gets sacked for a loss of 11. It was Emmanuel Bush getting in there to create his second big play of the set. And it's 4th and 17, so the Tar Heels going to have to punt this one away. Again, wind at their back. It's going to be a fieldable punt still. So maybe Marquise can take it the distance. Oh my gosh, never mind. Number 48 is a speed demon. Uh, I want to come out and pass on first down. Marquise has a one-on-one. -on -one. Tyson Mobley might end up having a one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see what they can do outside the pocket. The pressure coming. I'm just throwing that one away. Oh, my goodness. They brought everybody on that play. Way too dangerous for me as uh, that brings up second and 10 for us. And we'll run it up the middle. The blocking phenomenal. Beasley. Oof. Wish he could have broke that tackle or made him miss. Got seven yards. But it does bring up a third down for us. Only three yards to go. I'm going to look at the counter. Uh, can we motion Malcolm out of here? What is... Oh, no, 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 no. I don't like that. Let's bring Logan Malden over. What does that do? Just really messing with him. 
with the uh, the motions. Snap the ball, and Beasley getting just enough blocking to get the first down. That was really weird, that whole play, but it worked out for a first down. First down this time out. Again, stepping back to pass, throwing the timing route. We have Tyson Mobley. Man, that curl worked really well for him last game. It's already working here in this one. That one's 18 yards downfield. I would not mind it if we could just uh, score quickly on this drive. Maybe have chance for two more in the half. I want to be up 28 points by the time we go into the locker rooms. I might be asking for a little bit too much, but that's what I want. Second and seven, the play action. Got to get rid of this one. No. Just didn't, game didn't give me control or radon soon enough, so we're forced to take the sack there. Um, it's third and very long. Very curious to see how the Tar Heels cover this one, because we're going to go with the four verts. And, oh, that's not the pass I wanted to make. Tyson Mobley, that ball was way underthrown somehow. It's fourth and 16. We're going to have to give him the ball back. Coincidentally, the those plays come right after I say that we need to score a bunch of points. Not a huge fan of that one. Trying to kick it inside the 20. It's not going to be the, oh my gosh, what a bounce. <laughs> I was about to say it's not going to be good. That almost went out at the five. Yeah, it went out at exactly the five. So we have pinned them deep. Bad field position to work with for these guys. They're going to try to hand it off. Good play running the counter. Durham Finch needs to get the tackle, and he's going to do enough. And as is the case, anytime we get the CPU close to the end zone in this game, they break off a big run. We could execute perfectly for the rest of the game, but as long as they are near the, their own end zone, they're going to have a big play. Back to back, potentially. Good job for Smith to get up there and prevent that from being a big gain. See what they do on second and nine. It is going to be another run this time, thankfully, for a loss. And we get them in their own third down. And we get a chance for the defense to get off the field once again. Uh, that should be the final play of the quarter, though. This one is not going to get off in time. So, end of one, only up seven. Uh, we started with the ball, so it's expected. We had a chance to be up 14, and uh, I think that we need to get that second score real quick here. The last thing that we need is to give, uh, you know, this team a long time to stick around. We need to put this game away early. Don't want to give them any sort of hope. Part of that, of course, is the defense actually getting stops, which they haven't been doing a great job of. Man in motion. On this first down, looks like it's going to be a handoff up the middle. The safety blitz disrupts things a bit. And again, we hold them to it just a yard on the play. Just feels very inconsistent so far from the defense. On the second down, this is going to be a run. And Will Phillips gets there to slow him down. And we get them once again into a third down. But can we get off the field? Definitely expecting a pass on this down. They will step back to throw. And they're going for it. Jenkins can't come down with it. He went for the ball hawk. And completely missed. So it's 31 yards to UNC. Another first down for the Tar Heels. This drive is getting real scary at this point. They're going to hand it off up the middle. And it's up to Sandcastle. He does get the tackle. But they're inside the red zone. And they are moving way too easily. Our defense has not played well the past couple of weeks. Uh, really need them to step it up somehow. This one going to be a screen. And the quarterback just... It looked like he was throwing a little shot put there. It went five feet. Well, we've got them in this second and ten. Maybe a chance to stop them third and long. There it is. Another tackle for loss, but we haven't done anything to stop them on third downs yet. Come out hoping for the best on this play. We'll see if that's going to happen. They throw. Thank goodness Don Riley's there. We're going to hold them, but they're still going to score points on the drive. Field goal formation comes out, and they will have the wind uh, coming into them 14 miles an hour on this play, but I expect them to have the leg to get it up, and they will. So 7-3, to three, North Carolina answers back a little bit. Question is, can we actually find a chance to extend our lead? Should be a very returnable kick for Marquise. Fielding it at the goal line, no blocks. But he makes some space, and Marquise off to the races. Diving tackle misses, and he's going to take it the distance. So it just seems like in games where we're struggling on defense, it's the games where Marquise shows up and does something spectacular on special teams to just reinvigorate the team. 
So just like that, it's 14 to three. We've got an 11 point lead, not quite as good as a 14 point lead, but not bad either. Manny, good tackle, keeps him inside the 25. Not sure if this is a bad idea or not, but I'm gonna dial up the pressure on this one. Bring in a little bit more blitzes. Looks to be maybe a run on first down. We were there to slow him down and then Will Phillips finished the job. So another tackle for loss for this defense. And at this point, it really does seem like they either get a big gain or they lose yards. There's no in between for this Tar Heel team. Oh my gosh. Was that Manny Stokes just getting dusted again at this guy? I'm kind of glad that he's a senior. We won't have to deal with Manny anymore after this season because he just constantly is getting burned. First down, trying to jump the snap. We don't quite do it, but we get there anyways. And Taylor Smith, the only reason he gets two yards is he fell forward. How about a second and eight now? This one, they're going to step back to pass. And Manny gets burned again. It's a little bit unfortunate how predictable it is that Manny's going to get burned by his man. Uh, first down, bringing the safety blitz. Pressure needs to get there. It's not going to. And Don Riley, unfortunately, has to make a good tackle. It's not quite working out. Second and three. Again, trying to bring a little bit of a blitz. And in the end zone is the touchdown. Our defense, for being one of the top-ranked ones in the country, sometimes it's just so bad. It's completely hit or miss whether or not they're going to do good on a drive. So our lead again reduced just to four. Offense hasn't taken the field in a while. I'm not sure when the next time they will because I think Marquise could... Never mind. Thought he was going to take the distance. The block just didn't hold on the edge. So that dream is completely obliterated. Um, Is it too early to call a touchdown? No deep safety, and the safety that is there shies off to the left, so could be a very, very easy chance for Tyson Mobley or Marquise Jackson to burn their man and getting the pass off Marquise downfield, and he's overthrown while he's completely wide open. Oh, Radon, that hurts. Radon starts this game only three for seven through the air, so not having... Uh, a great day so far, but the running is doing pretty well as he takes off and gets us across midfield there with two and a half minutes left to play in this first half. Man, they just keep pressing up on him. Like, how do I not just tell Marquise to run deep on just about every single route when he's been wide open every single time he does it? It's just that Radon doesn't know how to not overthrow his man. That's so brutal. Back-to-back -back pass attempts for Radon. To just sail over the head of a would-be touchdown scoring receiver. And it puts us this time into a third and eight after only a two-yard pickup on the ground. Well, let's see what we can do this time. Stepping back to throw. X was open, and we take the sack. Couldn't get it off in time, and they're going to take the timeout. Fourth and 21. Uh, I think it's fair to say that we're getting embarrassed at this point. This is not a good game for the Teal Boys so far. Kicking it. Trying to get him pinpointed down inside the 10. And it goes into the end zone for a touchback. Just not quite there. This is a very dangerous spot for us now. They get the ball to start the third quarter. So if they take the lead or anything like that uh, on this drive and then get the ball to start the third quarter, we could be at a pretty big deficit. I'm kind of expecting them to pass it a lot on this drive there's a slip screen can we do anything to stop it leon can't jenkins can't don riley doesn't need to because thankfully he goes out of bounds we get here to this third and seven and we'll see what we can do as they again step back to pass and oh my gosh there's a man absolutely wide open completely unguarded i just don't understand sometimes what this team is thinking First down again, stepping back to pass. Man, potentially open. Man, he comes down with it. I'm going to say entirely thanks to my user because otherwise he doesn't get there. We get the first turnover of the game. And with a minute and 23 in all our timeouts, maybe a chance for us to extend our lead. Just got to hold on to the ball ourselves. As I'm not going to lie. Kind of just hoping that we can at least score. I would take a field goal. Doesn't matter how many points we get so long as we get points. Marquise, the back juke. Does it again, and Marquise with the first and goal. Oh, 
That's highlight real worthy. Oh my god, making guys miss like it's nothing. Two on the first move, another one on the second. I was really hoping he was going into the end zone there. Uh, we're planning on running the counter here, but I'm going to motion Mobley over. I don't want to run to the weak side necessarily. So first and goal, we'll try the counter. Try to follow our blocking, and there's not much there, but CJ Beasley... Well, he picked up yards, and then I think we're going to see a face mask here. So we're going to get even closer to the goal line. That puts us at the two with the clock stopped. Kind of unfortunate that the clock stops, but we'll run it up the middle. And I don't want CJ to score. We had an easy touchdown, but the last thing I want to do is give them over a minute to work with. So we're going to let the clock burn here a little bit. If we don't manage to score now, and that comes back to bite me in the butt, so be it. But the last thing I want is for our defense to have to try uh, any more than they need to on that next drive, and we get it on the next play. JJ Barr, good, good adjustment on the fullback dive. Moves over a gap, finds the space, and extends our lead back up to 11. This time only with 30 seconds. So two timeouts. I'm hoping this is returnable. I think I might have put it a little too deep. So they will take the touchback, and they've got 75 yards to go. They could do it. We just have to hope we get the stop. I'm hoping that they decide to pass. Honestly, it gives us a chance for another turnover. I'm not expecting it, and that's what you don't like to see. First down and a timeout taken with 25 seconds. So let's hope that we get the stop in the cover three this time. Backing everybody off. And that's all too easy of a stop. You know what? I'm going to make a risky play here. I'm going to take the timeout. There's some small chance that we could just completely stop them. So that's what I'm going to hope for is they'll step back to pass. And dang it, <laughs> it might have been a bit of a mistake. 16 seconds and they get the first down. Curious to see uh, what happens here. Clock is burning. They're not going to necessarily just throw it up right away. And we could have them in a spot. They take the timeout. They're going to kick a field goal. We could kick six this. And never mind. I was wrong. They're not going for the kick. They're going for the Hail Mary. Five seconds left. I'm going to use City McRae just to see. Maybe we get the sack. And we do. And I'm going to take the timeout. Just because I want to force them to play. <laughs> I mean, there's always a chance that this burns us. But third and 13, you never know when they screw something up. And it gives our defense a chance to maybe get another sack on the play. They're going to throw it up. And oh my gosh, that got battered around a lot. Oh, scary. Quarterback might have been hurt on the play, so it might have worked out in our favor. Hopefully he's not injured. Uh, that would lessen the, you know, the strength of our victory, but uh, it would also make it a little bit easier. Into the locker rooms, up 21 to 10. They do get the ball. If the defense plays like they did on the last two drives, we're fine. If they play like they did on the first couple, we could be in a lot of trouble. But the offense has done a good enough job if Radon... And just get his passes a little bit more accurate. I see no reason why we don't just walk out of here with a victory. Kicking this one away. And they're going to take the knee. And they'll take the touch back. Curious to see if they go back to their running ways. That's what I'll expect. As on first down. Yep, this is a run up the middle. One broken tackle, but Kale Mackey comes to clean it up after only a two-yard gain. And now the running back seems to be a little bit shaken up after the play. This is the same quarterback, so if he was hurt earlier, it wasn't a big injury. But missing that running back could be very, very detrimental. Oh my gosh, apparently it's fumbled. I don't know what happened. I thought he threw the ball. Did it get batted? Did it get was it a strip sack? All I know is John Taylor has recovered it and it's our ball. Since the replay didn't do a good job of showing what was going on, I want to take a look. It was a play action. And, oh, it, it just like his lineman got in the way of the throw. And he just kind of lost control of the ball and it went backwards, I guess the game said. So uh, we're now up two in the turnover differential and we have a real chance to open this lead up. Back spasms, but only two quarters worth for their running back. I guess we just have weak backs because we were getting three weeks when we were getting hit with those injuries. Uh, <laughs> we're going to run it with CJ Beasley on first down. It's a good five yards. And we'll just keep running the ball, I think, on this one. Up the middle, second and five. Beasley cuts it back inside. Gets to the five and gives us the third and one to work with. 
Let's see whose line is a little bit stronger here. Third and one, we're going with the dive, trying to follow our lead blocker, JJ Barr. I don't know if he helped us much, but we were able to find the first and goal just barely. So from a couple of yards out, let's try the fullback dive the first time. Again, JJ Barr bouncing it kind of towards the edge and JJ has had a phenomenal season and he finds the end zone to extend the lead up to 18 points here with 420 left in the third. So let's go ahead and boot this one away. And we'll let it go out of the back of the end zone. I don't want to risk a, a return this time out. Let's just take the touch back. Well, we got lucky with a turnover last time. Can we get lucky again on first down? Expecting the run. They do go up the middle. We even pinched our line. And they're nowhere to be found as DJ Jones gets 15 yards. His first carry of the game went for like a loss of one. So uh, that's a big change there. This one is an option. Quarterback keeping it. I don't know why he didn't even think about pitching that one, but... The game called that a sack, so maybe a weird play. North Carolina's offense is getting a little bit weird with it. Uh, this time, again, an option, but quarterback doesn't pitch it out. Takes another hit, and it's third and long. QB was shaken up a little bit on that last play again, so uh, we will see them bring in the backup for this third down. How's the coverage going to be? As kind of expecting a screen. It's really weird. I don't know what's going on. There's a flagger. They're going to call this a pass interference. Pass interference. On the offense? On the wide receiver? <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, well, we'll decline it because it brings up a fourth down, but that is not something that we see often in this game. With the bizarre penalty call, I mean, I think it's fair. It looked like we had a chance to, uh, to maybe pick up the interception but with the bizarre penalty Carl it brings out the punt team and Marquise is maybe gone looks like it's just one man to beat and Marquise could he do it back to back games no tried to cut it inside 45 just too quick oh I thought he was gonna go to the house for that one the quarterback uh again he was knocked out on that play but he has back spasms and he was only out temporarily so I don't know what kind of back spasms our guys were dealing with for a couple of weeks that it literally took three weeks for them to recover. Uh, but we might need to look into the training staff. Regardless, uh, we're doing well. We're up big. We're about to be up by more. Right on. The juke just slowed it down enough for the block to get there. And now we've rushed for over 100 yards as a team and we've got another first and goal. Funny thing is both teams now with 11 first downs each. Our first downs are obviously just a little bit more important. Running it up the middle, CJ Beasley doesn't get into the end zone, but he did get most of the distance that we needed, and I think it's time for JJ to come in. So we'll see if Mr. Barr can score another touchdown on the day. As it looks pretty easy, and in the end it kind of felt pretty easy there. So 35 to 10 now. This one's starting to get away from North Carolina. Once again, Frederick gets the opportunity to kick this one off. And this time I'm going to try to make it so they return it. We have that tailwind right now. So I just went and skied it so that we had a long time to get down there. And yeah, it worked. We kept them inside the 25. We have fewer plays run and fewer total yards than uh, this Tar Heels offense. But we're doing a better job as... Oh, Feel like I should have been there to be able to break that one up. Trying to bring the pressure. Second and one. If they run, it's going to be a designed quarterback keeper. It's not going to be, though. They throw it up, find a little gap between the zones, and they get across midfield. Best news for us at this point is just that there's not a crazy amount of time left as there the pressure gets to him. Man, almost a sack. Johnson got it away just in time. Running back comes back in for the Tar Heels, but we're going to bring the safety blitz at the same time. And the pressure not able to get there. Need a good tackle, and Kale Mackey delivers. So we get them in another third down situation. Question's just going to be, can we manage to get the stop? They step back to pass again, and oh my gosh, a wide open man. The tackle is good from the safety, but just having to rely on them to make touchdown saving tackles too often. Man, I think that next season our secondary is going to be so much better, but it is very frustrating sometimes watching them play. 
Uh, at least we're doing a good job stopping the run right now. Let's see what they give us on second and eight. Looks like it's going to be a pass. They will step back to throw. And in the corner of the end zone, Freddie Rogers is completely unguarded, which is becoming all too common of a theme in this game. CD McRae almost got there for the sack, but it's just a second too late. So that gives us now only a 35 to 17 lead. Uh, things could be worse. Things could be better. Let's hope that the offense has it figured out on this one. I didn't mean to spin move there. Ah, it just turns into a mediocre return. Our three previous drives with the offense have only lasted five plays and have all resulted in touchdowns. If that continues on this one, I'm going to be so surprised and we might be fewer than five plays. This raid on Randell is off to the races and it's going to be a one play touchdown on the option keepers. He takes it 75 yards to the house. And once again, we almost immediately answer North Carolina with a touchdown of our own. That's going to leave just 45 seconds on the clock in this third quarter as things are starting to look pretty good for us. Uh, this is how I wanted to look at the end of the first half. This is taking a little bit longer than I wanted to realize it. How about this first down? Watching over the middle. I got burned. I wasn't alone. Man coverage was nowhere to be found on that one. I'm surprised we only gave up four yards. Six yards to go for the offense on this one. They'll step back to pass, and I think that's me on the coverage that messed up, but thankfully Leon's there to tackle him. We managed to only give up two yards on the play, and it brings up another third down for us as they will run it up the middle, and there's just nothing doing. Uh, that was kind of awkward. End of the third quarter on that play. Uh, so we head into the fourth with a 42-17 to 17 lead. It's feeling really comfortable at this point. Uh, just need the defense to get us one stop, and we can start to burn this clock out. Trying to bring a blitz on first down, and it works. It looked like maybe they were going to go for a slip screen, but quarterback just got rid of it immediately. That's an easy stop. That gives us the easy stop on first down on the drive. So that's good news. I guess just on the set. Uh, second and 10. It looks like they're going to go with the screen attempt again. And Riley's there to slow it down. And that's all that we needed. A loss of three. Third and 13 as McCray does bring him down. Now we've got the third down to contend with. And again, we'll expect the pass on this one. Trying to wait. Quarterback all the time in the world. He gets hit as he's throwing it. And it's just out of bounds. That was one of those ones I was scared for sure was going to be caught. One of those ones where we were just going to get mossed, but it doesn't work out. Charles Hart out with an ab strain, it sounds like. As they'll be punting this ball away. And it could be returnable by Marquise. I'm going to have him do it. Got the first block that he needed, so there's a lot of space. Camera angle's a little bit weird, but hey, it works out. And we're starting this drive at about midfield. What started as kind of a close and almost worrying game has turned into just an easy little vacation up north. Uh, so we'll just start to run out this clock, starting with a six-yard pickup by Braden Bennett. On second down, try to bounce this one towards the edge. We got some blocks. I needed to get upfield a little bit sooner, but uh, I've been saying it all along. As long as we get positive yards on plays, I'm fine with it. Just makes the next play that much easier as we tick below four minutes left in the game. And we will run it, and CJ's not going to get it. I'm going to go for it on fourth down. We did lose the yard, but it's only fourth and three, and it'll, if we get the first, we can just get out of this game that much quicker. I think that we're in the position that we're in on our season where we're looking to make a deep playoff run. Uh, it's important that we make these games as short as possible so we can lessen the chance of injury. You know, see fewer reps played. And with that in mind, under three minutes to go now. We're going to bring in David Williams and the rest of the backups on offense and defense just to uh, continue to run this clock out for us and to establish some reps and some experience for the younger guys. David, not the best passer necessarily, but I am going to let him throw one. I think it's important that we keep this defense honest as we're trying to run the clock down and we get a quick little curl to Bradshaw for six yards. Takes us down to a minute and a half. And if we pick up this first down, unless North Carolina wants to take their timeouts, it'll be game over. And Braden Bennett says, no problem picking that one up. 
It's only our fourth third down conversion of the day and only his fifth carry. But it will be enough for us to take this one. We'll run one more play. We'll take the knee and it'll be game over. Williams keeping it on the option. Slide down. No reason, no reason to take a hit on our backup quarterback. And we can now come out into the victory formation once again this season. We've been seeing it a lot this year. And we can go ahead and just take a knee. Uh, Brandon Goon, 49 and 16 is the head coach now. Not a bad uh, record as a, as a head coach, I would say. Get the win there. We move to 11 and 1 to finish up our regular season. Um, remember, there were 17 recruits to watch North Carolina at that game. There's no way they come away thinking that North Carolina is the right school to play for. Unless they just want to, you know, to get early playing time. Because there's definitely going to be room. Uh, I mean, we're looking good. We should be now in the conference championship. Most likely again against Notre Dame. Um, we have a couple of bye weeks to rest up and prepare for it. I think that we're going to come ready to play. A bit disappointing that they weren't able to pass the ball as easily as they were 261 through the air for North Carolina, but we held them to 50 rushing and we created two turnovers, which is great news for us. We ran it for 204, which is really good, but only passing for 106 kind of hurts. We had uh, Marquise wide open multiple times, but just couldn't find him. Uh, Radon only goes 5 of 10 through the air but ran it seven times for 123 yards. Uh, surprised they don't give the play of the game to JJ Barr. He had three rushing touchdowns. Seems pretty impactful. Uh, Manny Stokes gets defensive, five tackles with an interception. Uh, I wouldn't give it to him. Uh, <laughs> there's guys who had sacks and multiple tackles for loss and somebody picked up a fumble. I would have to give it to, to those guys first. Uh... <laughs> How about uh, how about that though? Eleven and one. Final game of this regular season done, and we can advance now to our week fourteen bye. Uh, and I think that we're gonna be pretty surprised. I think we get a couple more recruits this week, and if not this week, then certainly after the back-to-back -back bye weeks, we're gonna be just swimming in in recruits, and our class is going to be certainly top five this season. Oh, man, we didn't get commits this week. That kind of hurts my feelings. Uh, two new guys ready to visit. Jason Rollins, Billy White, that's good news. Uh, Derek Atkins will come this week. Uh, just a lot of recruiting battles. We must have a couple of guys that are right there. And this is a lot of XP. Oh, my goodness. Coach of the Year finals, finalist for the Heisman. I'm curious who it is that jumped back up because both Radon and Marquise haven't been on that watch list for a while. 2,000 yards as a team in the season. Finalists for the Bolitnikov, the Lombardi, the Outland, the Remington, the Thorpe, and the best returner. And the Nagurski best linebacker, Benerick, Maxwell, and Walter Camp. My goodness. Uh, that's a lot of XP. Oh my gosh, we're about to level up. That's exactly what we needed. Number four in the country right now. Texas still at that number one spot. Did anything happen last week? Um, there was only a couple of ranked games. Notre Dame did beat Miami, so it looks like we'll be playing the Fighting Irish once again in the conference championship game. And Nebraska is the only top 25 team to lose and still be ranked. LSU and Miami, I think both were ranked, and I imagine they both lost. Um, so kind of, kind of boring in the top 25, just sitting at that number four spot, Texas, Michigan, Oklahoma, Coastal. Purdue, uh, Georgia up to the sixth in the BCS. That kind of hurts us. How about the Heisman? Who is it that's a Heisman finalist for us? Is it Marquise? It's Radon. He, I guess, had a good enough game to pop back up there. Um, again, I, I don't really see it. His stats haven't been that incredible. For once, though, our passing touchdowns interceptions ratio isn't like you know, right at a 1.0, you know, it's not like one for one. So 17 touchdowns to six interceptions is not all that bad this year. Still only passing at 67% though. Um, yeah, that was pretty, pretty solid. I, I'm definitely happy with the way that this game went. And I'm curious to see when it is that we start to get more commits in. If not next week, then it has to be the week after, but that's going to have to wait until next episode.
If you've made it this far, I want to say thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, I assumed you enjoyed something about the video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the like button. Uh, it helps the algorithm out, gets this video seen by more people, which is always nice. And if you aren't already subscribed, please feel free to do that as well. While you're down there, head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter and our community Discord. And as always, there's going to be a link for the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.